So what's he seeing my new stone is very sure about? And minding my freaking business, some friends brought my attention to this channel on YouTube. I opened it up on the big screen in the briefing room. It belongs to this conspiracy guy calling himself UAP. According to him, this stands for Underrated Actual Physicist. What the fuck? I've never heard of that before, so I decided to Google actual physicist. And guess what? Google's never heard of it either. Where it is? Perhaps this is one of those unprotected titles you can call yourself. It may sound good, but it has absolutely no academical value. And to my absolute annoyance, it's all about this two-year-old video that is just so freaking dumb. Our friends at the Silly Shoal Show, link in the description, tackled this video. But I think we can add a little something to their comments. Let's watch. The channel, the channel is UAP and the title is Fake Space Shuttle. Oh boy, I can tell you just about everything about how those babies worked. Try me. Some kind of machine gun because, yeah. And here are these dip wads going out to pretend to go up in a balloon. And here's the balloon. Absolute fucking tragedy, wouldn't it? If one of those fucking balloons popped, that'd give the game away. Um, and before he goes any further about how it's a balloon, I really want to know what's fueling the RS-25 engines if it's not that giant orange thing. Yeah, and how does that fucking balloon... I mean, you'd think it might melt. <laughs> <laughs> Balloons ain't really that resistant to heat, are they? Like this, perhaps? Uh, just enough to keep it from... It's burst into flames! Get it started! Get it started! It's flying and it's rising! It's rising terrible! Oh my, get out of the way, please! It's burning, bursting into flames, and, and it's falling on the morning grass, and all the folks between us, this is terrible, this is the one of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's just it's, it's like 20, oh, four or five hundred feet into the sky, and it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen, the smoke and the flames now, and the flame is rising to the ground, not quite to the morning mass, all the humanity, and all the fans are just speeding around it. I don't do it. And yeah, that's a good question. Is all of the uh, fire and explosion coming out the bottom of it? Is that all a hologram? GDI. What's your excuse there? Blue beam you technology. Like <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's see what his explanation for anything else is. <laughs> oh, Keith Newton. Why would they put the door where the steps are? Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> they shine a lot of orange lights. <clears throat> Maybe they have some real rockets. And the booster rockets. That big tank in the middle, if you want me to believe that that's full of liquid, you know how heavy that would be and that you're going to blast it? You, you got to be kidding me. You know? This means nothing. Oh, really? None of them were holding camera. Who the hell cares what this guy believes? If you want me to believe is not an argument. I don't give a shit what you believe. Shit. Once again, I ask you, what's causing the enormous fire to come out the back of that orbiter if it's not fuel coming from that orange tank? Okay. And as I said, and if it is a fucking blue, how comes it hasn't melted? And yeah, that too. The, like, the fire is clearly there. There is clearly a combustion uh, happening during that launch. How is it not destroying the balloon? So. Okay. Uh-huh. It's turning around. It's already started to curve over because when you fire rockets, you don't go straight up. You hang around and... 0.999 G's and you start going sideways because that's how it's done because that's rocket science. Huh? How many G's? 
like I said, if, if he believes the external fuel tank is a balloon, then what happened in 1986 when one of them disintegrated and the result was an enormous ball of fire that killed seven people? Yeah, and it winds me up when they deny that. Mm -hmm. you know, like, real people died. You know, it, it. not only can you tell it wasn't a balloon because look at it, uh, but the speeds it was going. Because when it explodes, it keeps moving in the same direction it was. And there's no balloon that can go that fast. No. No. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's like when they come up with bollocks like, well, if they, they just sort of go up a little bit and then crash into the ocean. No, they don't. They, I don't know what they expect. Um, I mean, you know, like, say, if you're driving a car at 100 mile an hour and then you're going to turn, you... you you didn't just turn, do you? So I, I swear they think that if we were really going into space, we'd fly straight up and then take a sharp turn to get into orbit. Ugly German Trues had a good point. He says, also, like I said, there is a video from about 100 landings of the shuttle. Who can see that and claim the thing is a balloon? Balloons don't crash to the ground like a ton of bricks. And he's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a ton of people watch the shuttles land. And yeah, they're, they're clearly big, solid objects. Certainly not fucking balloons. No. Nope, not at all. Pretend to go up. There we go balloon and here's the balloon and I don't see the door hatch thing on the top like I don't think that opens and <clears throat> they have sparks on the bottom they make a lot of steam they shine a lot of orange lights <clears throat> Maybe they have some real rockets, booster rockets. That big tank in the middle, if you want me to believe that that's full of liquid, you know how heavy that would be and that you're gonna blast it? You, you got to be kidding me. You know? This means nothing. Oh, really? None of them were holding cameras, though. Okay. It's turning around. It's already started to curve over because when you fire rockets, you don't go straight up. You hang around in 0.999 G's and you start going sideways because that's how it's done because that's rocket science and we can't understand it. Oh, they're already in space. Wow. And the hatch that didn't have the scene is now open and somebody's up there filming the space shuttle from the space shuttle. This is the passageway that the astronauts would have used. You see it retreating uh, there on the left. This is the passageway the astronauts would use in order to get out of the spacecraft uh, in the event anything had happened uh, up to this time. Now, of course, the only way they can get out, get out in the event of uh, some difficulty is to eject, which they Back can do. The first launch. Uh, even at this point. Now this one, there's definitely no the scene. It's much more balloon like. And here's the tube that the astronauts do use every time to escape. Because they're not getting on that balloon. Look how much higher it sticks up. I used the bigger balloon with it. You gotta hand it to them. They just full. I mean, they're bold. They just put it right out there. It's in your face. Big balloon that straps some rockets to the sides and shoots some flames, shoots some steam, shines some bright lights down from the engine holes and up from underneath, you know, spotlights. Dump a lot of water out. Now, I noticed a tendency for this program to get rather silly. Now, I do my best to keep things moving along, but I'm not having things getting silly. That's not a balloon. This is a balloon. This is a helium balloon. 
This is also a helium balloon. This is our hot air balloon. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Perhaps I'm in Dutch. Maybe a hot air boat balloon? So to summarize it, this big orange thing does not look like a balloon. Balloon, check. Balloon, check. Underrated actual physicist calls it a balloon. It looks more like a suppository. The only actual flying form that comes close is the Goodyear blimp. Just look at the way the tank is transported. It is really heavy. If you filled it with helium, it could never lift the total weight of the shuttle on its way to the launch pad. This is the spaceship shuttle Atlantis. Now let us put the Goodyear blimp beside it to compare them. These are the technical specifications of the Goodyear blimp. There were several blimps built, and some are still flying to this day. If you think this is not big, look at the tiny people under the arrow. Tiny, hey? And yes, there is something even bigger, but that comes later. This is a 10 year old panoramic view of the Kennedy Space Center with the Space Shuttle launch pads. Let us zoom in a little and project the Space Shuttle beside the launch pad for measurements. Oh, here it is. And overhead, let's hang the biggest craft that ever flew, the Hindenburg airship. The Hindenburg was almost as big as our Titanic. These are the technical specifications of the Hindenburg airship. This is the Hindenburg compared to the capsule building in Washington, D.C. How many Hindenburgs would it take to lift a space shuttle? One? Or perhaps three? Logistically speaking, it would be impossible. But in numbers, this fleet of giant airships would not be enough to lift a fully loaded shuttle. You really don't even need mathematics to see the impossibility of the space shuttle tank being a balloon to even lift this huge weight. It's just some grade school common sense. That's all you need. Underrated? I would rather go for undereducated if you're going to keep talking shit like this. An actual physicist? Nah. But we do have a better abbreviation for you. D-F-O-T-Y Hey, I'm Ivy, the co-host of this channel. If you like what we do, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell, so you can get notified every time we post a new video. If you have something to say, leave a comment. We look forward to hearing from you. If you want to hang out with us, come join us in our Discord server. Link is in the description. If you want to support either of us, please look in the description for Ned's Patreon link and our PayPal links too. We would greatly appreciate it. Bye. 
And Mr. UAP? We have a nice room waiting here for you.